Kennywood is a very small, classic amusement park located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that dates back all the way to 1899. And for the majority of the park, it doesn't feel like it's changed all that much since then, but its collection of roller coasters certainly has, and they have a few awesome modern roller coasters mixed in there with a few awesome classics. And in this video, I'll be ranking every single roller coaster at the park. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few things things as usual. Steel Curtain was unfortunately closed for the entirety of my visit, and little did I know it had been closed for the entire season. And just remember that this is 100% in my opinion, so do not get upset if your favorite roller coaster at the park isn't very high on this list. Anyways, let's move on to my ranking of every single roller coaster at Kennywood. Starting off our list, at number 7 we have the legendary Lil Phantom, the park's kiddie coaster, and that's all that this ride is, a fun little coaster for the kids that I only rode for the credit. Moving on to number six, we have the Racer, one of the park's three classic wooden coasters from the 1920s. Unfortunately, this ride really disappointed me. I didn't expect it to basically be an upscaled Woodstock Express clone, but that is really what I got. I didn't go in expecting much or anything at all, but this coaster still somehow disappointed me. It was so incredibly forceless. It was what me, as well as many other people, would consider a snoozer. I'm probably sounding very negative, so let's go over the one part of the ride that I actually enjoyed, the final drop. This actually gives a bit of floater airtime, and I just wish that the rest of the ride was like that drop. Starting off our top five is Exterminator, the park's indoor spinning wild mouse coaster. This coaster actually blew me away. First of all, the theming inside of the queue, and the ride for that matter, was very, very good. Also, the ride experience was way better than I was expecting. It actually had some decent sized drops and some fun airtime. Also, since I was the only person in the car, it spun like crazy. I was actually considering putting this coaster up to number four, but I decided against it, so moving on to the next spot. Moving on to number four, we have Thunderbolt, another one of the park's three classic wooden coasters from the 1920s. This coaster often gets praised by coaster enthusiasts for its lateral packed layout and its really long ride experience. However, I'm not really sure I understand all the hype. Yes, I know that I only got one ride in on it, and that was in a middle seat, but it still didn't really live up to my expectations, and I didn't really have any at all. Despite that, this coaster did still have some fun moments of laterals, and at the end of the day, it is my fourth favorite roller coaster there. Starting off our top three, we have Skyrocket, the park's premier ride's launch coaster. This ride is really a tale of two halves. You have the first half, which is really awesome, whippy, and and forceful, but then you have the second half, which is completely boring and forceless. If they were to somehow make the second half of this ride more low to the ground or taken at a faster speed, this coaster could be at number two and even a contender for the number one spot. But as of now, I could not see myself putting it any higher, at least the way it runs now. Now it's time to move on to the top two. And unlike most coaster enthusiasts, this race is actually very close. So close, in fact, that I was actually going back and forth on which one of these coasters I preferred throughout the day that I was at Kennywood, but I decided that the number two coaster should be Jackrabbit. This coaster exceeded my expectations in so many ways. I was not expecting too much from this 100-year-old coaster, but it sent my expectations through the roof. Starting off with my first ride in the back row, going down that double down, I thought that I was going to die. It was so ridiculous, it automatically boosted this coaster up to the number two spot. And for being 100 years old, this coaster is exceptionally smooth. I don't really have any major complaints with this coaster, especially when you consider its age of 100 years. However, the coaster at the number one spot is just obviously better for multiple reasons. And that coaster is the Morgan Hyper Coaster from 2001, The Phantom's Revenge. Where to start with this ride? It has an incredibly weird history as it started out as an arrow looper and now resides as a Morgan Hyper. Anyways, let's just get down to this ride and why it is incredible. 
The coaster's first half consists of two very large drops in a strange turnaround, and the second half consists of a bunch of insane ejector airtime moments. Not to mention that this coaster has a very minimal restraint, especially when you consider it as a 228 foot drop. This coaster is rather short, which is why I don't rank it super high in my overall list of top coasters, but it is still an awesome experience that everybody will enjoy. So that's gonna wrap up my video ranking every single roller coaster at Kennywood from worst to best. Let me know what your favorite coaster at this park is in the comments down below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time on Hang Time Thrills.